we're going to talk about the Chanel show, which was really, really interesting. And there was a lot of controversy brewing around the Chanel show. Reason being, the Chanel show was held in Manchester. And I kind of thought it was very interesting that Chanel would go to, you know, Manchester because Manchester is a very historical place, a huge working class background also. Um, and it's just a place with a lot of very rich history. And it's it's good to see a brand kind of highlight a different part of England that isn't, you know, London. Because even every time I tell people, oh, like they hear my accent when I'm in America and they're like, oh my God, you must be from London. That's not the only part of England. Like, <laughs> that's not like the assumption, oh my God, you have some form of English accent. So, you know, you must be from London. It's like, that's not the only place in England, you know, there's Manchester, there's Birmingham, there's Liverpool. And those are like the big cities. There's also smaller places. Like there's big cities like Leeds, there's Bradford, there's Huddersfield, there's Hull, there's Leicester, you know, there's there's a lot of places. Not everyone is from London. <laughs> um, so I kind of like that aspect where Chanel, whether they meant to or not, they're kind of highlighting to a global audience uh, you know, big city in England with a lot of history. The reason why there was a lot of controversy is because Chanel is obviously a massive, huge fashion brand, and they are taking over the streets, the working class streets of Manchester. And so anytime you have people, you know, big corporations, shutting down, you know, a whole strip and a whole part of Manchester. People are going to ask questions, and which is fair enough. And I heard some people, and I don't know why people almost worship luxury brands. I find it so weird. Some people were literally, you know, arguing on Chanel's behalf, saying that, oh my God, it's a good thing for Manchester. Chanel are going to bring so much money to Manchester. And I'm like, are you guys joking? One show, one runaway show, you think they're going to flipping change the lives of Manchester natives by throwing one like runaway show. The kind of things or events that change the economic situation of a city are things like the Olympics, things like the World Cup, where, you know, tourists come in in the hundreds of thousands and sometimes in the millions for things like the World Cup, things like the Olympics, like loads, like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of fans, all traveling, all spending money across the city. That is what brings money to a city, not a flipping, like pre-full runway show. Flipping out, like some people, I don't, when it comes to luxury brands, it's almost like they lose all sense of self and they will just defend these brands at, at literally any, <laughs> at any turn, it's hilarious. Exactly. Runaway shows creating trickle-down economics, is it, it's laughable. It's so funny. <laughs> so I found that take really funny. And someone who I'm a really big fan of, um, a journalist called Amy O'Dell, uh, she has a sub stack that I'm subscribed to. I would suggest that if you, if you want to, subscribe to her sub stack because she, her writing is just amazing. And she always writes about, you know, the most critical things. And just to read kind of what she said about the situation of, you know, Chanel taking over Manchester, I'll just read what she said. So she said that Manchester critics noted that it's a different kind of city. This isn't the land where Kardashians roam free or where groceries are known for existing in a luxury format. And she said, as Jess Cartner Morley writes in The Guardian, Chanel is pearls, Manchester is all grit. Chanel is the mecca of status handbags. Manchester, the city described by historian AJP Taylor as the only place in England which escapes our characteristic vice of snobbery. And then Amy O'Dell went on to say that creative director Virginie uh, Viard has settled into showing wearable stuff that sells rather than anything cutting edge, which I 100% agree with. Um, so it was unlikely for this show to suggest a big new trend or say, reimagine the contents of a recycling bin as fashion. No, the greatest impact of the show might be on the city of Manchester itself. Um, 
Once again, like I say, Emmy Adele, amazing writing, but I'll continue reading what she wrote. Um, she said, Manchester's cabinet member for culture didn't say how much Chanel paid to stage the show in the city, but that it was great for Manchester and is great for our ambition to be a global destination, he continued. The fact that Chanel have chosen to come to Manchester demonstrates that we're doing something right. Hotels and restaurants were booked throughout the week for various events relating to the show. Now, bear in mind, that is what was said by the councillor who is Manchester's cabinet member for culture. So this is someone that probably has a really high paying job. He's not the working class person. Now, let's compare that to what the working class people said. Now, let's see. Let's see. Because she said what the locals said. So she said, but not all locals were happy about it. Thomas Street was closed for weeks leading up to the show, with nearby streets closing closer to the event. The owner of a bar on an affected street said that foot traffic fell leading up to the event because patrons assumed businesses were closed and didn't know if the amount Chanel paid for closing for the two days would cover it. So when people are saying that, oh, Chanel coming is really good for the economics, you literally have someone saying that Chanel gave me a certain amount of money for closing for two days. And based on the lack of footfall that I'm seeing for my business, I don't even think it's enough money that would literally cover how much I would normally make if Chanel wasn't here, which in other words, means it's not changing his reality at all. It's not doing anything for him. It's not benefiting him in any way. And that was the case. That was what a lot of people um, that have businesses on that street and around the area were saying about the impact of the Chanel show. So once again, that whole mentality of, oh, Chanel are going to Manchester and uh, doing good things for the economy is just like laughable. It's so funny. It's hilarious. And just in general, something about, you know, a luxury brand almost turning working class culture and aesthetics and iconography into a caricature to be sold, always to me just seems a bit weird. It just seems a bit strange to me. And she tried really hard. I mean, I was reading a Vogue interview where Virginie v Viard was giving um, some context as to why she picked Manchester and why she wanted to go to Manchester because she was drawing parallels to the football culture in Manchester. I mean, two of the biggest football clubs in the whole world are in Manchester with Manchester City and Manchester United. Um, and she was also saying that Manchester had a huge textile manufacturing industry in the 19th century, which is definitely true. And to read what uh, Virginie said in an interview with Vogue, she said, I like small towns, not like London. It's too much like Paris. My grandfather and grand uncle managed the football team in Lyon. My grandfather and grandmother also worked in making fabrics there. So there is kind of that link between, you know, the nature of Manchester having a lot of football clubs that are really big and then also having a history of having a textile manufacturing industry and then Virginie having, you know, grandparents that married a football team in Lyon and, you know, the fact that her grandmother worked making fabrics there, which... I, I get it. There's there's kind of like a, a link there. I also thought it was kind of interesting that before the show happened, because for these pre-fall collections and also resort collections, they're always destination kind of runway shows. So they always try to create an experience for their clients. So what Chanel did, they tried to immerse their clients into Manchester culture. And their way of doing that was they invited a few Chanel guests to watch a game between Manchester United and Chelsea, the recent game where Manchester United beat Chelsea 2-1. And they gave uh, these people Chanel-inspired Manchester United jerseys. So there are Manchester United jerseys that said Chanel at the back. And then the number was number five, which was an ode to the fragrance Chanel number five. Okay, cool, whatever. Um, but if you're trying to immerse people into the culture of Manchester, there's way more to Manchester than just like Manchester United. But okay, <laughs> that was her way of doing that. Okay, interesting. And one of the reasons she said that she also thought Manchester was an interesting place 
which I did actually think was quite interesting, was the fact that Coco Chanel discovered her love for Tweed in Manchester. And one of the first places she discovered Tweed was actually in Manchester. And she took a lot of Tweed back to her, back with her, sorry, to Paris. And that's why she found a love of Tweed. And that's why now we can't get away from the Tweed with Chanel. Um, so I did think that was a fair enough point. I did think the rest of it, they were heavy, heavy, heavy reaches. And I do think it's quite funny that Chanel have basically reduced the culture in Manchester to going to a Manchester United football game. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. <laughs> um, I just thought that was hilarious. Or like when I think of Manchester, yes, I think about football, but what about the music? Manchester is known for having some of the most iconic bands coming from Manchester. Where's the music? Where's the culture? Why is it? Why are you just inviting these people to a Manchester United football game? Like, there's so much more to, you know, Manchester than just a football game. And even this piece right now, this graffiti piece, it says, the sweater says, it has a print of Manchester on it. And there was also another scarf and I think a skirt, a knitted skirt that had uh, this sort of graffiti print Manchester thing. And that was an inspiration to Manchester United and Manchester City. <laughs> Literally. Is this a sweater that has Manchester printed on it? And she's like, yeah, I'm really immersing into the culture. You know, my pieces are really inspired by Manchester. I mean, I have a blue jumper that's inspired by Manchester City. It says Manchester on it. I have this red knitted skirt that says Manchester on it. It's inspired by Manchester United, you know. And that's, you know, the inspiration of the Manchester. I thought it was an amazing touch that um, they had some Manchester celebrities and well-known people in Manchester at the show. So they had people like H, who's a really famous rapper from Manchester, um, who, who attended the show. They had Bugsy Malone, who's another um, really famous uh, rapper from Manchester and like personality now and does so many other things. That was a good touch. But something that Amy O'Dell wrote that I thought was so amazing. So Amy O'Dell wrote, additionally, Chanel had brand approved glamazons with M Manchester roots, like Liam Gallagher's children, Lennon and Jean in attendance. But the brand asked non-Nepo babies living on Thomas Street to dim their lights and not to go on their balconies. One resident told the Daily Mail that he began receiving letters about the show around three weeks earlier. The show ended up being disrupted anyway, not by the sight of average people on balconies, but by a pro-Palestine protest yards from the runway. So that's interesting. It's like it, they have invited Manchester natives to come to the show, but only if you're famous and only if you know you're a Nepo baby and only if you're a rich person. But if you're the everyday Manchester person, dim your lights and we don't want to see your face on the balcony because you're going to mess up our video filming and it's we, it's not going to look nice. And that's why you have Virginie Viard on one hand saying, you know, London is too posh and it's too city. I want to go somewhere with real culture. That's why I want to go to Manchester. So you have, you're saying that, but then you're telling the natives to literally dim their lights and not to stay over the balconies. And honestly, if you, if you look at designers that actually care about like working class people or they're trying to say something about working class culture, look no further than designers like Martin Rose. For example, one of my favorite Martin Rose collections is, um, I think it's Martin Rose Spring Summer 19 that was held outside on a street in London. And Martin Rose went out of her way to actually invite the locals in the area to attend the show and to be part of the show. That is so different to Chanel being on the opposite end of doing what they're doing and saying, basically, we don't want to see your face. <laughs> like, dim your lights. That is the that is the literal difference between when a massive corporation luxury brand tries to be authentic and talk about working class culture and it falls flat versus someone that actually comes from working class culture and so they don't have an issue or think that working class people are going to spoil their runway, which is why someone like Martin Rose 
when she holds a runaway show, she'll literally invite the natives from around and be like, yeah, come to the show. And you'll literally see some random person from North London sat right beside Vogue editors because Martin Rose doesn't care. That is authentic. That is what you call authentic. Not Chanel trying to be authentic and it's just never going to be authentic because these none of these people are authentic. That I kind of thought was interesting and I like the way that Amy O'Dell worded that. But yeah, I definitely suggest, you know, subscribe to her Substack because her newsletters are amazing. And I always look forward to reading what she writes uh, when it comes to just fashion news in general or like runway shows and what happens. <laughs> Should have sent them down the runway with a pint and shin pads for the money vibe. <laughs> That's so true though. Exactly. Chanel telling people to dim themselves for the fashion show. So ironic and metaphorical. Exactly. Because Virginie literally said she was going to Manchester because it's not the typical place to go to, unlike London and Paris. So if you're going to go to um, Manchester and you're talking about, you know, the textile industry, which was very working class, and even the music scene, the culture of Manchester is just very working class. Like if you think of you know, the music scene, a lot of like these bands, they come from working class backgrounds. So to really have a discussion about that, but then to tell those people to dim their lights is insane. It almost makes anything you're trying to say through that show irrelevant automatically. And I don't know how they don't realize that. Like some of these brands are so out of touch, they just don't realize that at all. To her, she was probably like, yeah, we did an amazing thing. We brought so much business to Manchester. <laughs> oh my God, I love fashion so much. It's so entertaining. It just makes me laugh all the time. <laughs> I just don't get the street. It's like a random street. It could have been held anywhere, literally. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. She just picked like a busy street in Manchester and shut it down. Disrupted everyone's lives. There was also actually, going back to Amy O'Dell, Amy O'Dell, she, she wrote some amazing stuff. I just remembered something else that she wrote. Um, so I'm gonna bring up her newsletter again and read it. Um, okay, so what Amy O'Dell wrote is about this show. She said, there is something grotesquely capitalistic about luxury brands taking over select streets in cities and bending local governments and residents to their will all for the sake of marketing displays. You can kind of imagine where this is all going. One day, a designer will decide they're inspired by air traffic controllers, and instead of building an airplane in a venue, the way Karl Lagerfeld once did, they'll just dip into the company's bottomless bag of money and pay government officials to shut down the whole airport for two days. And everyone who might need to use that airport will just have to sit there and take it, which is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> which is absolutely hilarious. Like, literally shut down the whole airport and then no one could literally travel. And they'll be like, oh my God, we brought so much money to the airlines. <laughs> Oh my God, like, this is why I love Amy O'Dell. She's such a good writer, such, such a good writer. Like, when I read it initially, I was dying laughing. So funny. <laughs> Shut down the airport for two days and everyone else, like, F you, everyone else. We don't care if you have to travel tomorrow for work. Um, LV went to Hong Kong. Is this a new trend or money-saving scheme? No, it's, it's not a trend. It's... Uh, so pre-fall and resort collections are always on location. Not every time, but most of the time they are. So they always go to like different locations to do the show. So it's nothing new. It's like, that's completely normal. <laughs> Chanel, we love Manchester. Also Chanel shuts down all the major parts of their local economy. <laughs> oh my God.
This YouTube channel runs on your support. If you want to support the channel, you can subscribe to my Patreon. You'll gain access to exclusive content that includes everything from my Patreon podcast, where I give a behind the scenes insight into the fashion industry, as well as a fashion book club, where I review my favorite fashion books. You can also check out my fashion ebook, which highlights the best fashion journalists to follow, definitions of common fashion terminology, and how to determine what a good source of fashion information is. The links to everything are in the description below. 